All right, Kapil. So what's the agenda okay. today? Okay. So basically in the previous session, we have covered the DMA tool. The DMA tool will be used for migration of data from on-premises to Azure SQL Server, Azure Managed Instance, or from on-premises to on-premises. So I hope that part is clear. Yeah. So DMA part is used for only offline migration. Sometimes we get a request to do online and uh, sometimes we get a request to do online migration as well. So we have one more utility, DMS, Data Migration Service. So we can do online and offline migration with the help of DMS service. Okay. So the prerequisite of the DMS, DMS service and your Azure SQL Server. But obvious DMS service is the Azure hosted service, right? So whatever the whatever uh, the on premises server you will use in the DMS in, uh, DMS environment must be in the same domain. Same domain. So in the test environment we will use our VM box. But in the real scenario, suppose that uh, you are working in XYZ uh, project and you have development test and production environment servers. That means all the production dev and test are in your domain. And but obvious, when you will open the portal in your environment, your portal would be also in your domain. That means... <laughs> there would be maximum max to max uh, some ports can be behave as like a blocker that can be resolved by the consenting firewall team i hope you got my point mm. yeah so <clears throat> so as i explained first of all we need a source server <clears throat> yeah so source server, either we can build on the portal that will behave as like a VM for our on-premises environment. Okay. Or, or we can use the SQL server if we have on our laptop. Okay. So why why I am not using the SQL server which is on our in our laptop? Because as I explained, your source server and Azure's DMS service would be in same domain. So our laptop is in work group, not in domain. You got my point? Yeah. That's why, that's why we are not using our the laptop SQL server. But, but in the DMA, in the DMA, which we covered in the previous session, mm -hmm. you can use our laptop SQL server. Okay. It, it allows us. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> so build a VM with the SQL server, then we can start. Okay, so, <clears throat> sure, let's, uh, first step is to build a, a SQL server. Okay. Yes. Uh, next step would be? The first step, build a SQL server. Next mm -hmm. step, configuration of DMS. Okay, DMS service, okay. Then third step, your destination SQL server should exist on the Azure. SQL pass? Uh, yes, SQL pass should okay. exist. Mm -hmm. The fourth step is deployment of the DMS service. Okay, the so fourth so, step is the deployment. Yeah. Deployment, you can say, or execution, you can say, or the migration. Start from the DMS service. Okay. Execution of DMS service. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Only four steps. Yeah, four steps. They are basically four high level steps. Okay. We need to do, uh, by using the DMS. Okay, great. So let me log into Azure portal. Okay. I am this is a brand new subscription. I'm going to create a new RG and uh, new instances. Everything is going to be new. So I'm going to say this is a <clears throat> on prem RG just for isolating. Okay. 
Okay. And this is a uh, SQL on -prem. Okay. And I'm going to deploy an East to us. It should be. Uh, SQL 2016 or anyone you can take it. Okay, SQL Server 2016 yes. SP2. Okay, fine. we'll go with the developer edition again. Uh, developer will be fine. Okay. Okay, it's a 16 VCP, 8 VCP, so 16 VCPs. Which one is better? It would be fine. Okay. Um, standard HD, SSD. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or even you can take the standard H HDD because here we are not using any disk related part. We will we will just host a sample database. Okay, so, let's go with the SSD for now because yeah. we are going to clean up once we're done with the lab. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we are preparing the source for now. Shall we also start preparing the target as well while source is in progress? Uh, yes, we can start open the portal. Okay. So it's initiating the deployment here. Once this is submitted, then we can go for a preparing the target and environment. Okay, great. So this is in progress. I'm going to the new tab. Just do a refresh. Then I will go to SQL databases. Let's create a SQL database. And I'm going to say, <clears throat> um, I would say, let's say pass DB, pass mm -hmm. RG. Or in the okay. same resource group, you can pay, pay, put them um, here. Let's isolate them because, you know, they are on-prem components just in our example, right? So this is the target. That is the source and this is the target. So I just want to isolate them, okay? Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. So now database name, I'm going to say students database, okay? Yes. Yeah. Server you can create. Yeah. So this one... <clears throat> DMS, um, yeah, CSG one. Okay, it accepted, and I'm going to use SQL Server authentication. Okay, right. Okay, good. So I'll go with the development environment without elastic pools <clears throat> and going to the compute plus storage. Yes. At the, yeah. Yeah, it's taking some time to load today. Oh, might be on, might be some slowness on HTUS. You can change the HTUS too. Might be on this particular region. Might start some slowness. Okay, we'll wait for a few seconds and if that's not working, then we'll go for some other location. This is the reason, uh, East US, US2, this, this is the region, not the John, right? Yeah, it's a region, correct. Mm A locally redundant. Okay, so general purpose and uh, how many vcores? Uh, four we need to... uh, four. four you can give us. Okay. 
Okay, click apply and it will be locally redundant. That's working. That's yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, so this is in progress. Still validating. Okay, deployment is initiating. Submitting the deployment. Okay, great. So this is in progress. Going back to this, I think uh, the virtual machine is created, but yeah, extension is getting installed. Right. SQL virtual machine instance is getting created. Okay, let's give a few more minutes. So now we are preparing source and target. So do we need to do anything with the DMS? Do I need to create a DMS instance service here? Yes, we will configure. First, let's check the, uh, the connectivity of the virtual machine, whether it's configured successfully or not. After that, we can configure the DMS part. Okay. Although, although or we can do, although we can configure the DMS parallelly, no issue. But let's check the connectivity because this would behave like at the source server. Yeah. So this is the server. Um, so while the deployment is in progress, we are good to take RDP. So let me try to take RDP. Do we need any downtime while configuring or while executing this DMS service? No. no Not required? No, okay. No, no, no. During the migration, it asks us offline and online part. If we will go with the offline, in that case, the downtime is required. Okay. Okay, I'm inside the server. It's very quick, yeah. but still the, you know, managed instance, I believe this is still in progress. Okay, this is also done, we are good. Okay, so we yeah. are inside the machine. Yeah, connect the SSMS. Okay. Okay, good news. Um, SQL pass database also got created. Right. Yeah, so we'll go back to server. So once uh, we will connect with the management studio on premises server, we'll create a database, we'll insert some data inside it. Okay. <clears throat> Or in the meantime, uh, open Internet Explorer. Okay, I think it's opening. Okay, mm -hmm. it's open. Okay, I'm connecting to the database engine. Yes, and then minimize it, minimize the management studio and open the Internet Explorer. Okay. And search download adventureworks.bat file. Okay. So we can download the backup from the net and we can restore it. It will create a database with the data. Okay, got it. I'll just download this Chrome first. That's more fast.
um, download adventure works dot back file adventure works yes full database uh, we have installed sql 2016 now so change uh, and download adventure works 2016 full database backup Yeah, you can download from here, first one. Yes, 16, 2016 back. Yes, you can download. Okay, there are two actually. No, 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 this is the OLTP. This OLTP, is the, uh, okay. Third yeah. one, third one. Lightweight. Lightweight, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's done. It's downloaded. Yeah. So where it has been downloaded, you know the path so that... Uh, yeah, it's in downloads, users, downloads. No issue. Open the SQL Server. Okay. And then try to restore. Select, we are restore. Mm -hmm. Device. Give the path from where your, your backup is placed and... Yeah, click on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're going right. Downloads and then select the backup file. Users, this is correct only. Or, or, or you can cut, cut the file from your download. Oh, file. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can just move it here, right? Uh, we can move this file from to somewhere where we can easily access it. Okay, we'll move it to C. C, okay, C this would be fine, no issue. do one thing copy this file in the f drive or if we can see then no issue in the f drive you can create one folder kamal and that we can okay i just need to select the folder right okay now yes. i can see that database yes. yeah no no need to change anything click okay and then okay yeah okay However, we can do lots of things here, but mm. the main purpose is to restore the sample database. Okay, okay got it. Database has been restored with the database. Okay, now go on the portal. Azure portal, okay. And then one more one thing, uh, create, uh, create one sample database. Okay. Okay, okay, so we have already created, right? We have already created. Yeah, we, we have this database. No, no, I'm saying on the, on the portal when we created, the Azure yeah, this one database already exists. Yes, this is a database. Yes. Students. Yes. Okay, then no issue. Okay, uh, open the portal and search migration service. Okay, got it. So migration service. Uh, yes, Azure Data Migration Service, third one. This one. Okay. Yeah. So first we need to configure it. Okay. Yes. Create. Got it. <clears throat> sources sql server correct yes. okay, okay. Wait, open, open this one here yeah. so that means in the dms service source can be anyone relational non-relational aws postgres mongo anything but in dms what do you found in dms the source was only and only either sql server or aws yeah it was dma right Yes, it, in the case of DMA, the source option was only and only two things, the SQL Server and AWS. But in the, in, but the destination was only an SQL Server, Azure DB, MI, on-premises or virtual machine. You got my point? Yes. But here in the DMS, you can see the lots of sources. Yeah. Okay. So here we are using the SQL server. Okay, got it. And then target is our? SQL database. Right. 
target is our SQL database because why our target is our SQL database because our uh, we have to, uh, I mean it's showing the option uh, data migration service is a Microsoft hosted on the platform and then um, our focus is to migrate on the SQL server okay so from where we want to migrate it's giving the um, uh, possibility the, from the lots of the sources but the destination would be the same correct so database migration service you can click here only the one option okay wait wait, wait. Uh, mm -hmm. so, okay I, I want to show the thing here you can see the the following source to target migration scenario are supported okay SQL server can migrate to MI and Azure DB. Postgres can migrate to Azure SQL DB and then Postgres. I okay. Mean, Postgres SQL data can migrate to SQL server. MySQL database can also be migrated to SQL server and itself in and itself their own flavor also, right? Hmm. MySQL can be migrated into Azure SQL DB and then MySQL also. Postgres can be migrated into Azure SQL DB and then Postgres also. I mean, with their in own version can migrate, but from for another the SQL server. Got it. And the with SQL server, Azure SQL DB, not Azure MI. Mm, correct. But, but Azure RDS, RDS can give use MI, Azure SQL server, and then to another things. Yeah, AWS RDS. Right, AWS RDS can go for the Azure SQL DB and Azure MI, and MongoDB can go only the fast fast DB, not okay. the Azure SQL DB, Azure. Got it, yeah. So, here the thing which we need to capture uh, AWS RDS can go MI and Azure SQL DB, hmm. but other flavors can go only in Azure SQL DB. Correct. And the difference between the Azure SQL DB and Azure MI I have covered earlier. Okay, right. so what would be the difference? What are the different features uh, it supports? Okay, click yeah. on this. Proceed yeah. further. Hmm. So here I'm going to choose this pass RG and uh... no, no, no. what is this asking? It asking the source or destination. Now, this is uh, where I'm going to okay, keep okay. this migration service. Yeah. yeah, first we are going to configure the DMS service. Correct. So, so this is not mandatory to keep the DMS server and uh, your destination logical server in the same resource group. We can keep it in the different resource group. But ideally, we should keep in the same to know where our services are grouped. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> Okay, SQL Server to SQL Pass um, the, using DMS. I'm just giving in this matter manner. Um, I'm taking each to as a location. Pricing tier, so one week or it says. A two week or would be sufficient, not sure. Okay, I'll go for two week or. Yeah. It has one week or, or a four week or. So there's no customization here. So, okay. uh, I'm trying okay. to drag it. Okay, now it has come. Okay, good. Chess uh, two week course now. Okay. And is used for the offline migration and premium is used for the online migration. Okay. Okay, apply and then proceed. Okay. Hmm. So, networking, it's asking for the virtual network name. Looks like this is not mandatory. No, the mandatory means your own premises environment and then your DMS service environment uh, must be in the same VNet. So ideally, it should come automatically. Yeah, I don't have any VNet created. Okay. So, okay, no issue. You can proceed further. Yeah, it's failing because I don't have the network. So I should create a VNet first. No need to be create. Uh, you need to select the existing VNet. Yeah, there's no existing VNet. It's a brand new subscription. So let me create a new VNet. Okay. So maybe because, you know, it's in a different region. That's why it's not showing up. So if I go to the virtual machine, this is an East West. And this is in a East West too. So let me create a VNet first. Okay. 
So what you're saying is um, the on-premises server and um, this DMS VNet should be connected, right? Yes. Okay. What if I use the, um, since my, uh, <clears throat> the SQL server is in Azure, can I just use this VNet? Yes, yes. We can okay. Use okay. The then I think I just need to change this location. And you can see here, right? Uh, it is showing up now. Yeah. Uh, so what was the problem? I think we have, uh, our VM was in different location, right? Correct, correct, correct. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have selected the VNet because this is the mandatory. This is a prerequisite. Just prior to start the DM configuration, as I told you, the um, our on-premises and DMS should be in the same network, same domain. Okay. okay. <laughs> DMS migration is in progress. Already we have restored our database that have data. Yes. And destination we have created with the uh, with the data. SQL database, correct. Yes. Now we'll start the migration service use execution. Okay. Yeah, how long this takes to create? Uh, it takes time. Uh, two, three, four minutes. Okay. Because it creates lots of things in the background. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, it's spinning up this. And then one more interesting thing. Once you configure the DMS, you can put in off. You can put offline. In case if you if you do not require to use for some time, you can uh, you can put in offline mode. So with Stop. this, are we gonna save some cost? Yes. Yeah. To stop this okay. service. Okay. Yeah. So it take it will take a time. So we can do one thing. Uh, it might be it can take ten to fifteen minutes also. Okay. Uh -huh. So without configuration of the DMS service, we can't proceed further. So okay. Let me let me brief the things what we have done. Okay. okay. Uh, our focus is on migration part. So we will discuss different different type of flavors. Uh, DMA part we have done and now we are going uh, to implement test uh, the DMS part. DMS stands for database migration service. It is a it is hosted on Azure. So what are the prerequisites we need to use to DMA? We need we uh, we use uh, on premises SQL server. Okay. And uh, the destination server would be SQL Azure ML or SQL logical server or you can say to the azure sql db so here we are talking about the sql server but the source can be anyone aws rds or uh, sql server or mongo cosmos mysql postgres anyone we can see the table uh, tabular chart a uh, data in a tabular format when we will see the dml what source can support what type of the destination so on high level, only Azure can migrate to, uh, on, on AWS can migrate into MI and Azure SQL DB, but remaining remaining will go on to the only Azure SQL DB and, and they're in on, on, on type of database. So the source required, destination required, and then DMS services required that need to be configured into the portal. Once the three things would be configured, then we will start to use the execution of the DMS service. And once we will start the execution of DMS service, it will ask a source server, destination server, and then we'll start the deployment. Okay. Most sometimes issues come, it depends upon scenario to scenario, what's the problem are coming. But the major drawback of the DMS service, it does not assess. It does not generate the assessment report of the database. So once we will start the DMS, we will see later uh, 
it is it, it is it has been started or still migration is in progress okay yeah, it's in deployment okay so i am saying the one major thing is uh, dms does not allow to generate the assessment of the report without assessment of the report as your deployment can be fail of the database those features are not supported into the sql server in on the azure okay so what we do what we do once we do the dms service deployment it suggests download the dma tool and generate the assessment report oh okay i am talking about the real time scenario but here here we can go here we can go with the without assessment or we can uh, without assessment report because dma part already we have done in case if some people uh, want to do the dma service they can use the dma part and go through the previous video okay okay so we can stop here uh, the video and then uh, once the dms service would be configured so uh, we will we'll continue from the from there so tomorrow we will start the dms service and then export backup recovery part okay sure yeah so instead